Installing plugins in Jenkins is pretty easy, but today we're going to talk about how to install a plugin using the Jenkins CLI. Are you new here? If you are, welcome. And if you are new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Darren Pope, and I'm a developer advocate for CloudBees. As a Jenkins administrator, you may have had some of your users come to you and say, hey, I need this plugin. So you sit down, you log in, you try to search for it in the Manage Plugins UI, and finally you get it installed. But you dream, you wish that you're able to just do this from the command line. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to use the Jenkins CLI to install a plugin. Now to get started, what we have today is a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.277.1. We also have an agent connected to that controller with a label of Linux. Before we install the plugin, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and set up a test pipeline with a step that is going to be in our new plugin. So I'm going to click on new item and I'm going to give it a name of test pipeline and pipeline and OK. And I'm just going to paste in the pipeline here today. I'm not going to do anything external. And you can see here, I'm going to expand it just a little bit. What we have here is a very simple declarative pipeline, and we're just calling a couple of steps. Uh, I'm going to do an, an LS of the workspace. Then we're going to use the step touch to create a file named hello text. And then we're going to list out the workspace again. Now, this touch step does not exist right now. The touch step is available inside of the Pipeline Utility Steps plugin. That's going to be the plugin that we install. But first, I want you to see what this looks like without the plugin installed. So we'll go ahead and click on Save. And then I'm going to click on Build Now. Let me bump this back down one. We can see it failed, which is what we expected because touch does not exist, but let's see how the error looks. What we can see here is the no such method error was thrown, and it says no such DSL method touch found among the steps. And here are all of the steps that are available currently on this controller. All of these steps are provided by other plugins that are already installed. So since we know that we do not have the touch step available to us, and we know that it exists inside of the pipeline utility steps, let's get set up so we can actually use the Jenkins CLI to install this plugin. The first thing that we need to do is we need to go and download the Jenkins CLI. Now, fortunately, that is right inside of our controller. And in fact, you should use the version that ships with your controller because each version of the controller has its own CLI. So if we go to Manage Jenkins and go down to Jenkins CLI, what you'll see here is there is a link to the Jenkins CLI jar. And to get started, you need to download it. So I'm going to right click and copy the link location. And I'm going to go over to my shell. And I'm already set up in a downloads directory, but I'm going to create a new directory underneath that called CLI. And I'll go inside of that. And then I'm going to go and download that jar. Now, this path on the controller is open. So there are no credentials necessary to download this jar. And we can see right here, very quick download. It is roughly... 3 meg, so no big deal to, to download this jar file. Next, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we are able to communicate from this jar file back to our controller. So my controller is running on a completely different machine than where my shell is right now. So I am local on my machine. My controller is running somewhere else. So what I want to do is I'm going to say java-jar. Whoops. Java dash jar, Jenkins CLI dash jar. And I'm going to give it the URL 
where our controller is, which is right here. And then I'm going to run a command who dash am dash, whoops, dash I. And we can see here that it authenticated as anonymous with the authority of anonymous. And if you think about it for a moment, that makes sense because I did not give this command any credentials. Since I received this answer back, this tells me I correctly connected to my controller. Let me mess up here for just a second and let's say I mistyped the port. And what you're going to see is a connection refused. So by giving it the correct URL, we can see that although I'm anonymous, at least I, I, I quote unquote authenticated against this controller because I received an answer. So since it appears that I'm able to connect to the controller, let's see if I can go ahead and install this plugin. So the command is very similar to begin with. So java-jar, I give it the URL, then the command is install plugin, and then I give it the plugin name or the plugin slug, which is pipeline-utility-steps. And if you're curious where I came up with that, let's go over inside of Manage Jenkins, Manage Plugins, we'll go to Available, and I'll type Pipeline Utility Steps, which is right here. I'm going to right-click this and open in a new tab. And what you'll see here is this is the plugin page for Pipeline Utility Steps, but this is the ID Pipeline Utility Steps, or more specifically, pipeline-utility-steps. This is the ID that we are using in our command here. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And we received an error saying anonymous is missing the overall read permission. Now this message seems a little strange, but it boils down to this. Since I am anonymous and I do not have the permissions to do anything on this controller, then it's not going to allow me to just install a plugin whenever I want. I need to be authenticated. So what we need to do is set up an API token for a user so we can actually install the plugin. So let's go and create an API token for our user. Now I'm currently logged in as admin. And if you've never created an API token, it's pretty simple. So I'm going to go to admin, configure, and right here near the top is API token. So I'm going to say add new token. I'm going to give it a name of my token. You can make it whatever you want to make it. And then click on generate. So here is the token. Begins with, in my case, 11. So I've copied that value and I'm going to stick that off to the side because I'm going to need this token again in just a moment. So that's all it takes to create an API token for a user. How am I going to use this credential? Well, let's go back over to our shell and take a look at what our options may be. So to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to type that. Oops. I'm going to type help. So here are all of the different commands that we can use. Now, since we want to specify a username and a credential, in this case, the API token, what we're going to be using is the auth option. Now, we could pass it in using a user and secret inline, but that might not be the best thing from a security perspective because if you were to look back in the history in my command, you would see what the user and the secret is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file and we're going to pass that in to our command line. So since we are already here in our CLI, let's uh, clear this out. And I'm going to create a new file called creds. 
You can name it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. And the value is going to be the, the username, in my case it's admin, and then I am going to, since that copied over, can't use that, I am going to go and grab my token. Now the other thing I want to call out about a token, as we're still looking here, is you need to copy this token now because it cannot be recovered in the future. Just to see what that means, if I click on admin up in the breadcrumb and go back into configure, we can see my token, but now that value is gone and it shows that it's never been used. So what we have here is admin colon, so username colon, and then the token. I'm going to go ahead and save this file. Now let's attempt to install the plugin again. So if we take a look at the command, we can see now that we've included a dash off with a reference to the creds file with an at in front of it. So the at is the magic value that says, oh, go read the value from this file. Again, everything else is the same. Install plugin and pipeline utility steps. So let's go ahead and hit our enter key. We can see that we're installing pipeline utility steps from the update center, and that's pretty much it. Or is it? Let's see if it actually works. So we've installed the plugin. Let's go run the job one more time. So although the plugin has been installed, there is still no DSL method touch found. Why is that? Well, that install plugin sort of lied to us. It is installed, but it's actually not available to us yet. If we go over to the installed tab, what we're going to see here is this Jenkins instance requires a restart. So what we have to do is we have to do a restart. So with that in mind, I could just do a slash restart within the UI, but I want to go back over to the command line. I want to show you a different way to do it. So I have another command here that is safe restart. Now I could just use restart, but I'm going to use safe restart because safe restart will wait for anything that's currently running before it does the restart being a little more conservative in how we're going to do the restart. Everything else up to safe restart is exactly the same. We have our java-jar, we have our dash s, we have our auth, because in order to do a restart, we still have to be authenticated. So let's go ahead and execute our safe restart. And what we're going to see here while we're waiting is if we click on dashboard, we can see now that our controller is restarting. Now that our controller has finished restarting, let's go ahead and log in. And if we go back over to our manage plugins one more time, we'll ignore the updates there for a moment. We can see that that warning is gone. And if I type in pipeline utility steps, it's now showing up under installed. So if we go back over to dashboard, test pipeline, what we're going to see if we run this job one more time is it starts up, we get our LS, we have our touch run, and then we can see from the LS before the touch, there's nothing there, and then after the touch, we have hello text. Why would you want to install plugins from the command line? Well, there's numbers of reasons. Maybe you want to script everything and have people review it before it's actually applied to the controller. That's fine. Because sometimes when you go into a UI and point and click, you might not be tracking everything, at least when you create maybe a shell script. You could execute these commands, get them approved, and know when they were run or who ran them when. By doing things from the command line, it gives you the ability to be able to reproduce that in the future as well. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, please consider giving us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, 
click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.